Gunnison. Gunnison was, uh, we stayed in Almont, I think it was. What was the name of that uh, uh, town? Three, um, yeah, it was Almont. It was Almont. Yeah, three, three, river. oh, three it was rivers. Gunnison, right. Three okay. rivers. And we were on our way there, and the, I don't know, it was like October, wasn't it? Early October? Well, you told me we were going to go over the mountains. Yeah, we went over Raton Pass, yeah. and everything seemed fine. We're going across South Park and everything. Everything seemed fine, and we start up. Raton, I think it was Pass, and do you remember what happened? Wait a minute, was it Monarch Pass or not? Monarch Pass, it you're right. Monarch you're Pass. you're right. Re right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what I remember is that we started up and we we got a few snow flurries, and then they kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And then, snow squalls. I mean, squalls, yeah. yeah. We got yeah. to the point where people were stopped, or we could see that they had slid off onto the side of the road because. Because everybody's going so slow, they stopped. And then the people at rear wheel drive were trying to sliding, and they were sliding off. They, the they that's what I remember. Right? Yeah, that's right. And then we got up to a state trooper who then monitored your, he says, uh, he looked at your car, he knew the model. He yeah. goes, you're good because you had four wheel yeah, drive, right, right, all right. wheel drive, yeah. whatever. So we made it over that. In Wait a fact, minute, I'm, I'm thinking that as we were going up there, I wasn't so sure it was a good idea that he let us go because we were the only. Yeah, car. I looked in the rear. I looked either behind us. Behind no us, us or going forward, and I thought, what either happens way. if we get to the top of this thing, and I'm starting to go down the other side, and I can't stop. That's even right. Even though you you've got automatic or you've got yeah, uh, brakes don't. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. So so we get so to check that uh, there's a ski kind of summit place up mm -hmm. there. And I walked through the snow. You stayed in the car, and I walked through the snow. It's up to my waist. Yeah. And I walked in there, and I said, "Is it? Is it? How is it on the other side?" They said, "The other side's fine. It's the side you just came up." Okay, yeah. just trudge back to you, and then and then there we go. Okay, went. So, yeah, I do. Remember so that so trip. anyhow, we yeah. get to Gunnison. Uh, we go north up to uh, Almont, which is Three Rivers Resort, and then what we were going to do is fly fishing. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. So yeah. we went and 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 the guys at this lodge there where they sell the, the fishing gear said you're going to see big fish in there you're going to see them as big as your leg in there but you're not going to be able to catch them well, why do you say that and he says well that's why they're big <laughs> they're smart that's that's up at the reservoir yeah but that's yeah. where we were going to go fly yeah, fishing okay. we're going to buy it because actually at taylor reservoir the spillway mm -hmm. there's a gold water gold river whatever it is fishing there where he was right you could see them as big as your leg in there and you couldn't catch them because they, they you know, they, they know what flies look like. <laughs> they, they right. Yeah. And so uh, I, I was teaching you to fly fish, and I said, "There's this is lesson number one. <laughs> There's three types of flies. There's dry flies, wet flies, and night crawler flies. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little bit of night crawler, put yeah, it on there. Yeah. That, that did a whole lot better than yeah. those other two categories. And so uh, once we did that, I was catching them. I, you have to release them. And we, we were, we were going to well, do Well, we went to another place, too, where I can remember sitting on a rock or something. That was another stream. That wasn't up at the same place. I think that's where you caught so many trout you were born. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you said, yeah. it's. It's. I caught like 17 trout there yeah. in 10 minutes. Well, I can also remember going out on the boat because you said the reason you wanted to go out is because you had this new technology, fish finding device, Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I bought this thing called iBobber, kind uh -huh. of like the iPhone. You cast it out, and it, it sends something back to your phone through Bluetooth and tells you how far down, the, you know, what size the fish they are and everything. It was a good theory. It didn't work worth yeah, the crap. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, they got your money. Yeah they, they, yeah, they got me. Um, okay, so let me see what else I remember about that. What, what comes to your mind? Anything? I mean, we did some fishing. Yeah, I remember we were. We came... I remember you were fixed. You were fixing a hinge or something on a door, and it sliced oh, you yeah, real that's good. Right. There was um, the door closer was just a spring, but on the end of the spring, it stuck out and it was like a sharp barb on the end of it. They should have uh, put some tape or something on it. When that door came shut, it just ripped a hole in. Yeah, it, of you were arm. bleeding for quite yeah, a while, yeah. and you <clears throat> you got that doctored up. And then the phone rang. Ah, uh, remember what? I think I think I remember what you're talking about. I got a phone call from Donna's daughter. Yes, is that what you're talking yes. about? Yes, I got a phone call yes. from Donna's daughter. That Donna was um, 
a friend in Florida. She was in a nursing home and my dad would go to see her every day. And he says, I, I, he really didn't want to do that. And I just give him a lot of credit for going over every day and seeing her. And it was a big part of her life to do that. And she was always just so happy. Yeah, soul. she was a good Christian kind. woman, very happy woman. And I just felt like, you know, when I looked in her eyes that I had a, a special feeling Connection, about her. Yeah. It's like I was connecting with her. And uh, I know that there were some bad things in her life that had happened. And when I went to, to talk to her about it, everything that she told me was bad. As I asked her about going skating, and she said, yes, yeah, something happened. I asked her if she had a pet, and she said, yeah, it ran out in front of a semi-truck. And it was like I didn't want to ask her any more questions. And then much to my surprise, anyhow, she showed a picture of herself at like 35 years old. Oh, my gosh. I mean, she Beautiful. looked like a movie star. I mean, Beautiful. she didn't look like it then, yeah. but, but boy, what a knockout. Well, at the end of all of this, uh, we knew that she'd been in, a, in a, this nursing home for a while, and I felt so sorry for her because Dad would say that she could uh, know that she had soiled herself or defecated, and, and she'd call for help, and they might make her sit in that in that wheelchair for six hours and she wouldn't they wouldn't come and take care of her so anyways that's the background of her but the reason that i'm bringing this up is because i got this call from her daughter and her daughter said that her mom had passed and of course my immediate reaction was that i was really sad because she was such a good woman everybody loved her and i felt bad and then at the same time i felt good for her because she didn't have to put up with any of this stuff anymore, and she was in a better pace. And as I told you, it was a it was a paradox, a paradox of why was I both sad and happy at the same time? Right. It didn't make sense right, to me. Right. But yet, when I stopped and thought about it, when she died, she was taking something out of my life. So I was selfish that she was gone. Yet I thought about it in terms of her situation. I felt good for her. Because she didn't have to put up with that anymore. But anyways, that happened during that trip. Yeah, and uh, that that took the wind out of your sails. Yeah. I mean, it, it affected me, but not to the extent. Well, I can extent. remember the next thing that happened after that is is we got into a good conversation. I think that was something in another video that you did. But I can remember the drone going all the way up and you'd captured all of the, the scenery. And we'd been back... How many? We've been there maybe two, three times. Well, like that, that that was uh, Crested Butte that that happened, which was where we stayed there. No, no, no. no, 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 no it was no, we no. stayed At there. The camp, right there where we were sitting, right outside the cabin door. You took something and the you brought the drone straight up, and there was yeah. a campfire right there. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant when we got it stuck. Mm -mm. So one of our day trips from that very cabin that no, we stayed. No, before in. we even go there, one of the things that I want to mention is that uh, we were uh, sitting at the campfire. And there were two guys that were next door. Do you remember? There was two guys. They were from Texas. And they came over and it was dark, right? That's right. Well, we had yeah, a fire. It was right dusk. And dusk. we said, you know, we said hi to them and said, come on over and join us. Not sure if they would or not. But these guys came over and they were talking. They were kind of hillbilly -ish. Oh, they were. And yeah. everything was y'all. Yeah. So we knew that, <laughs> you know, that they were. And, and the one guy was a scout. That's how he made his living is they would take people and go out on hunting trips. or Oh, he was a guide, hunting yeah, guy. Yeah, hunting guy. Right. So, anyways, and I'll make this real short, but the, the um, he said that the one guy said he was having troubles with his wife and he was on the verge of divorce. The other guy said that his wife wanted to go spend more time with the girls in town. And so they were all, or she, or the wife was always going out with them. He says, I feel like I'm going to lose her. And she said, well, the reason you're going to lose me is because where we're living, I want to be closer to town to save the marriage. That's he right. said he was willing to go That's right. to do anything he wanted. And you could tell that they were really, both of them, the reason they'd taken the trip is because they felt really down about, about the relationships that they had had. And I asked them at some point, I said, have you ever prayed about it? And they said that they felt like they were Christians, but... They hadn't prayed about it like that. And as the night went on, I had some kind of paper. And I don't know why I had it with me, but maybe that's part of the divine intervention or something. But I had a piece of paper. And I said, come on over to the cottage that we were in. I said, I want to read this to you. And when I read it to him, I said, would you mind if I said a prayer for you? 
And while I was saying the prayer, when I opened my eyes, the one guy was on his knees and he was crying. Yeah, I remember and, that. And, yeah. that. and so that was what I call a significant emotional event, not only for them, but for us. And, uh, and so, you know, after that, I just figured it was all done after that night was over. But since that time, they've been emailing me. And just recently, by the way, I don't know if you know this. No, they, they, they emailed me too. Okay. So he said that he'd found a new wife. He had a seven week old baby. And he said, I would be so honored if you would come and baptize us. Uh, uh, yeah. So. It, and they said, name the stream. We'll, we'll be yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. There's so that's still water. yet yeah. to come, but it just... Yeah. It was really a memorable night just because of that. And uh, I just felt good that God had used us to be in that spot at that time to, to, to help them with their issue. So and, speak, speaking about memorable, this really blew my mind. I was, we stopped, I don't know if you remember this, but we stopped along the side of the road. And it was an insignificant place. We were just taking pictures of the autumn leaves, and that's about it. And I ventured over over to the other weeds over here just to look at something, and I came across something that was... Do you remember when I, where I'm going I, with this? I don't know where you're going okay. with Okay. Well, I went back, and I saw uh, when we were... I was probably five or six, and you were eight or uh, eight. No, eight. I know where you're going And so... I went back and we had this, what we called a camp, mm -hmm. but at that age, it was just a little fire pit. Now and, we're talking and, probably, I was probably nine years old and Dan would have been six or maybe it was 10 and seven. No, it had to be six because we moved when I was six. Okay. So it so had yeah. to be at All least right. six or less. Yeah. And so we would take a day trip out to this place. It was nothing but a couple pine trees and yeah. stones arranged. And we kind of claimed that as our camp. I know you hate our when cabin. I, I our hate cabin. when I hate when you do that. The air quotes. The air, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I came back and I thought this is a long shot, but Dale, just come here. This path over here. Just walk back there. I'm not even going to say anything. What I, what what you're going to walk back there for? Just walk back there and uh, as see what, soon see what, as I, as soon as I came through the trees and I ducked underneath a branch and I looked. And I says, "Oh my gosh!" I said. That's the cabin. Yeah, and that, I said, no, wait, wait, had. cabin. Cabin, what do you mean cabin? Yeah. Be more specific. Yeah. And then you said... That's the one that we... When we went up and we left 466 and we went up to this place that we call our cabin, it was identical to what I was looking at. And 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 seemingly insignificant, yeah. 55 plus years later, yeah. we both had the same recollection of it. 55 at least. Yeah, yeah, 60, 60 at least. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd hate doing math in public. Uh, but yeah, and, you, and it hit you the same way that it mm -hmm. hit me. Mm. And so, um, can you, anything else about Three Rivers that comes to mind? Well, play? you know, we'd been there three times. We always would take pictures of the meals that we'd done. Cause right. We'd always do uh, a filet mignon. We would do uh, the red potatoes, right. asparagus, right. or something yeah. like that. But anyways... We well, had one of the one of the things we, we we took a day trip over to uh, Crested Butte, Crested Butte, which uh, is maybe sixty miles away. Right, and I remember that the most significant thing I remember about that is you brought your drone over there, I and brought and you GoPro, did right. a lot of yeah the GoPro too. I can remember we we put the the GoPro and on the path where yeah we'd have it either either coming or going it would catch us there. yeah and then I can also remember that when you put the the well you even had the the drone so that it would follow us but that wasn't the big you would have it down there and have it ready to launch and people would come back it was almost every one of them would you say can't you do, can't do, do, do that, that. And, and, and then you know, I'd explain you know, I'd say well actually I can yeah because this is national forest not a national park yeah oh okay so and so th what scared me was with that drone um I, the screen on my phone that is the monitor for flying the darn thing got really dark and I couldn't see on this. I just was going by what I was seeing and I flew it over this roaring river and it was on the other side of the river and I got wrapped not literally that it touched any of the branches, but it got behind well, them. It has some kind of a it has sensing. A proximity yeah, sensing. but it was like beeping me no matter which yeah. way I went. Yeah. It's like can't go that way. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. And so 
Oh, man. Well, you thought you were going to lose it. Well, I did. I mean, it's 1800 bucks, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it's one of those things, uh, you know, a spouse uh, isn't going to yeah, let you yeah, get yeah. two times. So uh, anyhow, that all worked out good. Well, I can remember going along that path where the people were stopping you, and you were setting up the cameras. We went down to a falls. Right. But then when we came back, I can remember those. I mean, the reason that we were there is that the Aspens, they weren't in... Uh, what do they call it in season? Or right, what, right. Wasn't the right yeah, time. we were there in the but summer. But still, he'd take the uh, drone and bring it up to the cliffs, and we'd do a reveal, what we call a reveal, where it would come up to a tree and get to the top of the tree and show everything out there. So we went up there, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a lightning storm came. And lightning is, I don't know, I didn't see it hit anything. But you know, what do you, here we go again, just like the other story. We're at the highest point. We're going over, we're going over where there was a glacier, not a, uh, or there was an avalanche. And you remember it was thunder and lightning. We're running down there and trying to get out of the way of it. Where we were up at the top of the mountain where that avalanche was, right where that road was, it was too skinny. You just oh, and it started start. raining and really start, then it started. Hard. Then it yeah. started to lightning. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, you know, where do you, yeah, there's no trees. We were up above yeah. timber lines. Yeah. So, yeah, so. Well, you got some great shots that day because I remember there was a lake down at the bottom of that. So yeah. Right. All right. So uh, enough of that. I want, I want to end this segment with our, our trip here to Telluride. And the things that we saw here, first of all, we're in a very nice cabin. We've done some walking around the area. We're staying in a place called Rico, which is about 30 miles from Telluride. And, uh, more, some, more secluded than, yeah. than Telluride is. And so we took a trip to Bridal Falls, which we've got some great pictures. The waterfall is 365 feet from top to bottom. And there was also some other beautiful ones along the way. Two other ones that we saw that we got some good clips on that. And some, uh, we got some footage along the way. Yeah. And last night we went up to a concert. We took the gondola up to the concert. We from sat from from Telluride. Yeah. The concert wasn't very good, so the concert we took was another terrible. gondola ride over the top of the mountain and down on the other side. And we walked through Telluride a little bit, but it was a good trip. Good trip. Yeah, now, um, a little bit about where we're staying now. Um, I'm going to talk about it, and then you'll see some B-roll footage of it as we're talking here, about this cabin. This cabin is by far the nicest one we've ever been in. Eight, 1883, right? 18, eight, 1983. Or 1883, 1883. Yeah, it was built, yeah. Right. And uh, they've, they've raised the floor for the kitchen and the bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's good for their pipes. I get it. They have access to the pipes by raising the floor. Boy, in the dark, I got to tell you, <laughs> I was walking across that and didn't realize it wasn't level anymore. <laughs> and it was and it wasn't what you're thinking. You're probably thinking it's the I, I stubbed my toe. No, other way around. I even ever gone off a curb and didn't realize yeah, it was yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, this place, uh, to describe it a little bit, it's nestled back like he said, 30 miles from the kind of the bustle. Of, yeah, hustle and bustle of, of, the city. of, of this well city. It's not. It's I don't know. It's kind of big there. I guess tell you right, and and so we're way away from that, and so we've talked to some people around that are walking by that gave us some ideas about that concert, that very concert you yeah. talked about, and so uh, that's been really nice. Like I said, the one of the nicest ones were we're leaving in the morning. And so uh, this is going to kind of punctuate this trip. So is there anything else you wanted to... I do. I, I think this is the last... I know this is the last seg uh, segment that we're going to do because otherwise it becomes too long. So the way that I want to wrap this up is I just want to say, first of all, I want to thank Dan for all of the videos that he's put together over the years that are very significant to me personally. I've enjoyed so much the time that we've been able to spend together. And I guess as a good way of ending this, I want to imagine that I'm s sitting on a picnic table again. And I want to give thanks to God for the many blessings, not only in life, but the fact 
that we've been able to share these times together in the beautiful forest that God has given us. And I think that overall, we are much more blessed than certainly we deserve. That life has turned out a whole lot better than we could have ever expected. That two, two young kids that come from a town of 2,000 people to coming to this, this place in our lives. And I'm very grateful. And an emotional part here for me as well. So one of us is going to be watching this. Yeah. And the other isn't going to be here. And so what I'm going to say to you is don't get caught up in it. Just remember these moments. Remember this moment in particular. Yeah. And um, it's okay. I'm going to see you on the other side. Well, as, as Dr. Zeus would say, don't cry because it's over. Uh, be thankful that it happened. Yeah, and we we definitely don't take it for granted, man. We smell the roses. In fact, take pictures of them yep. every every chance we get. That's the thing, yeah. So, I think that's a wrap. Um, I, it's nice to go back through all of the memories and to capture them here on, on camera. And uh, maybe somebody else will see this besides us. Maybe our kids and they'll learn something a little bit more about us. I know you don't have any kids, but you got stepkids. But anyways, anybody that's watching this... Well, anything is digital it's anymore. Of, it's, it's all part of our legacy. A anything that's digital anymore, you don't know where it's going to end up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> and it'd be the immaculate conception if you had a kid at your age. Anyways. <laughs> oh, you never know. I still might get that, that yeah. one call. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, cheers. Wait, wait, cheers. wait, 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 wait. I wasn't ready yet. All right. Hey, look at that. We didn't even hardly drink any, so we got to get on it here. I know. Too all much right. talking. All right. The last thing I want to say is... Hi, bud. Hi, bud. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You raised me up so.